Please be seated. So classes of 20 and 21, as Merrick Garland said at um, his talk today, it's been a long decade. <laughs> so welcome back. Um, so a special welcome to all of our faculty, staff, graduates, loved ones, friends. Thank you for being with us today. This day has been a long time of coming. Um, after two long years, we're delighted to welcome back to campus and to celebrate the classes of 2021. Congratulations. <laughs> so you're special people. First, we drove you out of Andover Hall. <laughs> then we drove you off the campus. <laughs> Then we graduated you in your absence <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> We've really treated you well, haven't we? <laughs> you, got, <laughs> you got your tuition dollars worth, isn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, for your resilience and your endurance, you are the special ones, never to be forgotten. Your classes will not, never be forgotten. And this is a special moment. We're really, really delighted to have you back on our campus. Um, so thank you for coming. I want to begin by acknowledging that we've weathered more than just a global pandemic together these last few years. Um, there's been a lot of stuff going on right up to these celebrations. Um, so I do think there's been a sense of special bonding with these classes as we've gone through a lot of things together. In what has felt like a wave after wave of unprecedented and challenging times, the Divinity School has been referred to as a beacon of hope for a better world, and I hope that is so. Certainly I was struck by Merrick Garland's remarks this morning about public service and about um, spending time in service of others, not just ourselves and our own well-being, and I know that um, if any classes can do that, uh, these uh, graduating classes will. So the true strength of HDS, as you know, is its people, it's our community of students, staff, faculty, alums, and friends who work towards justice and peace, and in so doing, give us hope and make a world of difference. I think we've gotten through these tough years because of a sense of the strength of our community, um, which you've all uh, contributed to, so thank you so much. Families and friends back there in the back seats, we're celebrating with you today as well. You have endured with our graduates. You've loved them and supported them, given resources to them, um, all through a very tough educational experience. So thank you so much. So I'd like to ask our graduates to rise up and to express their thanks to you, the, their friends and loved ones and families. Thank you. So one of the joys of graduating two classes together um, is that we have a bumper crop of class speakers. <laughs> so um, lunch will be delayed until about 4 p.m. Um, so the speakers who will um, uh, present um, joint addresses from 2020, Ashley Lipscomb, uh, MDiv. <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> Um, and from 2021, Anna Del Castillo, Ebony. Um, come on, settle down. Um, um, Ebony Nash. <laughs> And last but not least, Kayla Smith. Kayla. So 
So to the dazzling quartet, come and take it away. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Invoking memories helps us heal. I want to invite each of you to sit yourself, situate yourself comfortably. Close your eyes and join us as we lead you through a grounding. It's Tuesday afternoon. Our stretch of classes have ended as we gather our books, share hugs and laughter throughout the halls, a sweet aroma fills the room. At 60 Oxford, our temporary home, or for some, Andover Hall. We wait patiently as Katie and her team create the space for intentional gathering. Tupperware in hands, it's time for community tea. Remember the mini meals study sessions and gatherings at The Rock, the great smell from hot buffets, endless chatter, and busy bodies moving to and from class. The Rock was a community space we use in every phase of our HDS journey. In this moment, we breathe in deeply, acknowledging the gift of being here today on this land where we experienced so many seasons. We acknowledge our ancestors, those who came before us on this land, the land of the Massachusetts people. We remember the trees that we sat under, the snow-covered grass we ran through to make it on time to class, the changing seasons that accompanied our own self-transformation. Remember the amazing events you imagined and co-created together, from solidarity balls to panels and student-led conferences. I may be a little bit biased, but big shout out to the Black Religion, Spirituality, and Culture Conference. All of these things we remember in community and ground us in the work we do. Today we take a deep breath, remember, and open our eyes. Thank you for joining us in this grounding. Today, these beautiful, compassionate, and wonderful sisters and I center the question, what is the soul of this work? How do we find the heart in a world that feels heartless? In the spirit of Bell Hooks, there is no movement for social justice without a love ethic. There is no love without justice. There is no justice without love. Love is direct action, collective community, shared experiences and memories, and accountability. It is my honor to pass the mic today to a truth-telling womanist who, as my roommate, showed me what it means to do the work of justice, healing, and love as a daily practice. A woman who loves hard and one I am personally in awe of. I pass the mic to Ms. Kayla J. Smith. <laughs> Thank y'all, and thank you, my dear sister Ashley. Yes, love is direct action. Whatever you're doing, just do something and do it through love. I'm here to say, please, make it all count for something. This HDS degree, your time here, and how you choose to live and show up for others going forward, Make it count. We were chosen to have this experience, to be equipped to take real action when it is most needed. We unfortunately are witnessing how critical it is to have healers, artists, and pastoral counselors in communities. So we must answer the call. And we are ready. To be here today shows all of our extraordinary resilience. 
we shared some incredibly tough, but also several joyful moments together. You should be absolutely proud of yourselves. We spent countless hours studying all of these different texts, theories, and theologies. We did a lot of internal work. We also got to be intentionally curious together with people from across the globe. And what did we learn? We will never know or understand it all, but you gain the most when you are being in space with others. How can I know your story and challenges and not do anything to assist with your wellness? This type of love should be extended to all living beings and expansive beyond our flesh. There are loved ones we had here with us at this HDS journey who are no longer here. So continue to make it all count. Also, embrace that proudness from your supportive community to keep pushing towards positive action. With this great honor of being a Harvard Divinity graduate, also comes even greater responsibility. So take direct action towards opposing violence and injustices. Take direct action in making sure you are well so you can transform other ecosystems. Take direct action in healing and creating boundaries. Also be direct in how you nourish yourself and honor your roots. I am from Memphis, Tennessee. My family is proudly Orange Mound, which is a community which is the first neighborhood in the United States to be built for and by former enslaved black people. So I come from a place of action and collaboration. I chose to spend my MDiv journey learning deeply about my ancestors' history and how they have always been unapologetically on their sacred land. We were all connected to a past, we are all connected to a past of people who did great deeds for us to be alive today. They left us powerful tools and resources to survive and to pass it forward through love. May we love through direct action. And now, I'm honored to pass the mic to someone who has been a ray of sunshine to every person she encounters. We share Mississippian roots. M-I, crooked letter, crooked letter I, crooked letter, crooked letter I, humpback, humpback I. She'll let you know the South and Latinas got something to say. My fellow Freedom School colleague, I admire how she gracefully and lovingly creates collective communities, Ms. Ana Del Castillo. It's hard to go after Kayla. Thank you so much. Creator, may my words be fueled by you and nurture hearts here today. What a sight, what a gift to look out at so many friends and family members, tias, abuelas, cousins, chosen family mentors. Thank you for being the village that got us here today. Today is as much about you as it is about us. In the midst of the joy of graduation and this big reunion, I know that I am not alone in finding it difficult to be here today. Difficult to, as my beloved professor Terry Tempest Williams says, find beauty in brokenness. Just five days ago, 21 innocent lives were taken at the hands of gun violence and unhealed trauma. 18 of them were young Latino children at the start of their lives, 
watching Lilo and Stitch, and excitedly awaiting summer vacation. This massacre occurred only days after 10 black lives were taken by a white supremacist in a New York grocery store. We feel it. Deep in our bodies, we feel their absence from this earth. We feel it here today. These tragedies are a grain of sand on a shore of death and violence. As I stand here today, fulfilling my parents' wildest dreams, I think about all the victims of violence whose dreams are stolen by guns, systemic injustice, greed, and climate catastrophe. As I proudly wear this Harvard Latinx stole, I think of those children who won't feel the excitement of wearing a cap and gown and crossing a stage like the one in front of joyful families. Today we remember them. May we honor their lives by choosing not to look away. Choosing not to look away, a practice first taught to me by my mother, an activist, healer, and the most fierce lover of God I know who is crying right now, so don't make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> This practice was further strengthened by my time at HDS. I remember sitting with many of you and Professor Cornell West, which shout out. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Yes. Sitting in his fall 2008, 2018 course on the life of W.E.B. Du Bois, where he urged us to remove the veil, that we might stay awake, stay alert, to the systemic injustices not only on this campus, but beyond Harvard's gates. We remove the world, we remove the veil in a world that tries to make us swallow our rage, swallow our heartache, continue with business as usual, a world that normalizes the passivity of thoughts and prayers without action, while black and brown folks wonder if they are safe to walk into a grocery store or elementary school. We choose to see. Hmm. This active decision to witness, to be present with, and to scream from the tops of our lungs about injustice is what makes HDS a formative and sacred community. I see you, all of you, fighting with everything you have to build the better world that is possible. I see you, Charlotte, advocating for survivors of gender-based violence. I see you, Melissa, amplifying the voices of community members who are too often ignored I see you as Mira, using hip hop and body movement to push for liberation. I see you, Lesady, holding institutions accountable with love and calling people in to join you. I see you, all of you, living a life beyond the veil. When the world is dark and the days are long and it seems like there isn't hope in sight, let us remember that we have each other. Let collective community and radical joy be what propels us in the days to come. Let that call to check in on your bestie be somebody's grace in a world of lonely people. Let wine nights full of deep belly laughs and impromptu karaoke be our places of sacred rest. The work of witnessing is not easy, but together, sprinkled with a little bit of joy, rest, and music, it is possible. HDS class of 2020 and 2021, we have been through some shit. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> and I really wish I could stand here today and tell you that it will get better. But beloveds, we know the battle continues on. Let your rage be your prayer. Choose to see in a world that attempts to blind us with media and screens designed to keep us away. Get proximate. Touch the hands of those who are grieving. Quit your job if it does not feed your soul. Take that risk. Tell someone you love them. Choose to heal. Because what the world needs is for you to feel alive, to be alive, to choose to see. I end with an offering of words from one of my favorite poems by Maya Angelou, titled Continue. And if you were on a Professor Moore's Palestine trip, trip, you heard this poem. My wish for you is that you continue. Continue to be who and how you are, to astonish a mean world with your acts of kindness. Continue. To allow humor to lighten the burden of your tender heart, continue. 
and a society dark with cruelty, let the people hear the grandeur of God and the peals of your laughter continue. To dare to love deeply and risk everything for the good thing. Continue. Thank you. Everyone crying in the audience, y'all gonna make me cry. So I'm just gonna stop crying. Um, it is now with deep, deep gratitude that I pass the mic to my sister friend and someone for whom I draw fuel and inspiration from, a true steward of justice, and dare I say it, the queen of HDS, <laughs> Miss Ebony Nash. <laughs> this love. All right, I'm going to shake it up a little bit, so stay with me. <laughs> love is shared experience. My name is Ebony Rain Nash, and I am the daughter of Teresa Witte and the late Ronald Nash. Born from the fabric of hard work and perseverance, raised in a small town in southeastern Colorado, and mentored through the lens of advocacy and liberation. I stand before you today with a heavy heart for our country and our community, and the work laid out before us. As we have heard from many and have experienced firsthand, life is uncertain. So uncertain that of any year to accept our attendance and walk the line of servanthood, we chose now. <laughs> <laughs> what a time to get a degree at Harvard University. What a time to pack our bags and move from our homes in a parade of joy. A salutation to our communities. We will return with great news, bearing gifts of legacy and future prosperity. As we approach the infamous Harvard Square, we were promised showers of wonder as the red brick glistened upon our arrival. To be so encircled with excitement and immersed in our studies with a forethought, this will never end. What a time for an upheaval so quick. Ripping the rug beneath us in an email asking us not to return for our safety and for the safety of others. Our home still framed in the moment as we work to regain footing just in time to close the semester. I can only remember things left unsaid, not experienced, and plans postponed with a rain check in this drought we call life. What a time displaced milking memories to feed our progression, apologies and sympathies as we struggle to balance academia with the weight of the world, and for many, the weight of existence. Yet again, Harvard became soon too far to touch, nevertheless hold the shimmer of light in our eyes and no longer from dreams, but the reflection of our computer screens. A bitter taste litters the tongue as we exercise the unmute button to claim our seat back in procession. <laughs> what a time to have to fight for justice. Not only personally, but professionally, to read of our ancestors' for struggle for agency while the world around us negotiates our value through a political campaign to beg the university for the redirection of their funds, removing their knee from the PIC, the prison industrial complex. <laughs> what a time to have gathered in this space today as a guest, as alumni, as the current practitioners forced to practice while in practice, call us exploratory healers, determined survivors, as familiar and unfamiliar this ground is to me, I still found home in each of your smiles, in each of your laughs, and in the memories we shared together. What a time to celebrate. Although not ideal to have experienced the potential of this university through the confines of technology, we did it. We faced the unimaginable, 
proving that praxis is a crucial part of the process to serving our communities. Where many saw this as a saving grace to our family, breaking the cycle, first generation. <laughs> and a disruption to the existing infrastructure. I'm proud to stand before you today beside these three incredibly BIPOC women and say we made it. Only within the past 67 years could we, as women, have had this opportunity to make it at this institution. Congratulations, class of 2020 and class of 2021. We have been putting in the work since our first day together and we will continue to do the work until justice is embodied, until love fills the saucer beneath our cups, and until the world foresees better days. From a wilderness first responder, the founder of the Institute of Anti-Racist Education, directing efforts with the Malcolm X and Dr. Betty Shabazz Center, <laughs> the many PhD tracks among our community, and so much more to recount our legacy. Let us rejoice in these memories, those heavy and those light, and let us remember the resilience displayed through our moments of adversity. We are class of 2020 and class of 2021, familiar to few, but remembered by all, the anomalies. <laughs> because when the world has nowhere else to look, they look to us. As I close this moment, I want to ask, where will you look? Toward our people incarcerated on the inside, our families lacking adequate housing, health care, and safety, to the victims of violence as a result of poor legislation, to the population who are heard the least and hushed the most, where will you look, HDS? So much love for all of you and as much love as I have for you I'm so excited to pass the mic to one of my dearest friends my mentor somebody who saw me in my chaos the first person to affirm my existence within the university an individual I share experience with and hope to cultivate more a woman I will learn from for the rest of my life Ashley Lipscomb I was told I only have five minutes, but I'm a black Baptist preacher and uh, I don't follow rules. <laughs> Y'all nominated me to do this in 2020. You knew what you were getting into, okay? <laughs> Love is accountability. Today is a day of celebration. You have worked for this. Those who love you best have watched you sacrifice. Watch you take time away from them. Watch you miss events so that you can study, take financial risks, have tough conversations to maintain your boundaries as a graduate student. You know, Ebony said this in her speech virtually in 2021. She says so eloquently the words of Du Bois, and I echo those words today. The honor, I assure you, was Harvard's. Mm. <laughs> You are the gift. You are the gift that keeps on giving. From 2020 until now, we, the alumni of HCS, hold the tools that the world needs. 
different. Many of you have gone on in these two years to different fields, and there you have reminded them about how you care for the humanity of those closest to you, the humanity of those who are most vulnerable to the world's systemic oppression. As graduates, in the study of religion, you have unpacked the ways that spirituality grounds us as we ask the tough questions. How? Do you show up for children who experience violence and they are sacred? How do you show up for the communities who are grieving the loss of their elders due to white supremacist patriarchy? How? How do you show up for communities when you too are feeling the weight of all of this as you live out in the world? How? In this discipline, we are the ones who others look to for a foundation. They ask us for understanding. They seek us out for the answers and for a little bit of hope. You are the ones who have to show up in all of this. So I ask you, how do you do it? You just do. Because that, my dear friends, that's the work. You just show up. You've had the controversial conversations on this campus. You've protested and called from that for divestment from this university, even if they haven't shown accountability to you. You've fought for this. You have been present as chaplains in universities, in hospitals, in jails, in prisons. You have shown up for your friends who were sick. You have shown up up for your friends who have lost loved ones. You have visited those who are most in need. You have brought food to the tables of those of us who are struggling financially. You've done the work. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, I say, the honor, I assure you, was Harvard's. Yeah. Mm. And for those of you who felt like you didn't do that work, I would stand here and say, shame on you. But we all have failed at one point in our lives. We all have messed up and maybe missed the mark, but this is the opportunity to get it right. Mm -hmm. You've been out in the world for two years, showing up, and you return today, and the reminder is love is accountability. Love is you showing up. Show up and remind each of us of the beauty of what it means to be human. Because there are moments when we forget to do just that. There are moments when we fail, each of us. There are moments when we forget how to love. You see, there are other Harvard alums who, on occasion, have become congressmen, senators, presidents, celebrities, leaders, entrepreneurs, and they have walked these similar halls that you have walked, but you see, they've made decisions that would support enslavement, build racist institutions, conduct bias and offensive research, create policies and laws that would enable mass inca incarceration and many other crimes against humanity. That's why after the long-awaited celebration, you must continue to show up to remind those other alumni how love is actually supposed to work in real time. Yeah. Show up when they won't pass a hate crime bill. Show up when they deny women the right to do as they please with their bodies. Show up when the... Show up when the loud and wrong would try to distort the accurate telling of history in our schools. Show up when policy enable violence against our trans siblings. Show up because the list of oppressive and violent tactics against our communities is far too long to mention in five minutes. Mm. Show up when you have the words and show up when you don't. Show up when you have all the tools and show up when you have to find them. You are the ones who provide new ways of breathing in a world of unbreathable circumstances. Unlock your imagination and create a world we have never seen before because we need you. So I close with this question. Who are you accountable to and how will you show up for them? You will need to know this because when the going gets rough and life just lifes you, 
sometimes it's hard to keep going. Mm. But I encourage you to remember your who, your what, and your why. Who will be impacted if you don't show up? Who will miss out on that opportunity if you don't leverage your privilege? Who will miss out because you are not speaking the truth right from your bones? There is a reason they need you to show up. What systems will continue to harm communities like mine if you don't dismantle them? What liberated future that you have imagined won't come to fruition if you don't show up and do the work? Your answer to these questions is what's going to change and transform the work. Your answers to these questions it will, is what will inspire you to keep going and to keep doing what you must. My matriarchal village answers my who, my what, and my why. They are, and the community that loves me are who I am accountable to. In the spirit of Alice Walker, I will fight to protect my home. You see, I am the great-granddaughter of Delzora Starr, who is the wife of a sharecropper who knew that your faith will make a way out of no way. I am the granddaughter of Mamie Lipscomb, who is in the audience, who showed me how to stretch a little. <laughs> stretch limited resources so that they reach someone else's table who's asking for help. I, my paternal grandmother, Pauline Sappington, may she rest in peace, showed me how to sit in silence and observe because that is where your discernment will come from. Mm -hmm. My mother, Sylvia, who has faced inhumane treatment behind a prison cell, who's also celebrating with me today, taught me how to speak with my heart and never let the world strip me of my joy. I am the niece of Kimberly, who's also here celebrating, who taught me the importance of honoring my name and never letting anyone disrespect the history I carry with me. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> I hope you take the lessons they have taught me and you carry them with you. Because again, the honor, I assure you, is Harvard's. And if that's the case, I can't wait to see what you offer to the rest of the world, to the class of 2020 and to the class of 2021. As Kayla said earlier, make it count. <laughs> And now I pass the mic to all of you. Congratulations. Thank you, Ashley, Anna, Ebony, and Kayla. <laughs> Don't you feel sorry for the class of 2022? You only got one speaker. <laughs> So this morning in Tercentenary Theatre, our 2020 and 2021 graduates of the Divinity School were recognized. The degrees that they have already been awarded are comprised of 124 Masters of Theological Studies, 80 Masters of Divinity, three Masters of Theology, and three Doctors of Theology. So now we have an opportunity in a more intimate setting to celebrate these two classes and the individual achievements they represent. Each graduate will be presented by the Associate Dean for Enrollment and Student Services, Tim Wilski, 
And as each person comes forward to receive their gift, maybe a second diploma, no, that's it. <laughs> if the graduate has indicated a desire for us to do so, a brief statement about their plans will be read by Steph Goschel, Assistant Dean for Student Affairs. So we're going to recognize um, the graduates by class year, beginning with the class of 2020. <laughs> As the Dean mentioned, we will now recognize the class of 2020. We will call up each of the graduates here today, alphabetically by their degree program, starting with the Master of Theological Studies. So we have a tradition here at HDS of reading a personal statement um, if, after each graduate's name, if they've chosen to provide one. So we encourage you to celebrate the accomplishments of these wonderful people, however you see fit. So clap and holler as much as you'd like but please hold your expressions till after each of the personal statements. We make it a little bit tricky because not everyone submits a personal statement. So <laughs> pause for a second. Uh, wait for us to start to read the personal statement if they've chosen for us to read one. Uh, Steph will be doing that. And then you can clap and hoot and holler all you want afterwards. All right, we'll get started. Edward Zamorano Oblong. Ed Edward. <laughs> expresses gratitude for his parents' steadfast support and amazing friends at HDS. He'll commence a PhD at the University of Notre Dame, focusing on religion, government, and international affairs. <laughs> Ezra Grace Angier. Ezra's time at HDS provided invaluable insight into the importance of community and spirituality for mental health and resilience. They're hoping to bring this approach into the world of clinical psychology and to work with those affected by trauma. A massive thank you to everyone in the HDS community. Francis Eleanor Brumley. Frances would like to thank her dad, who encouraged her to apply to Divinity School and who never missed a volleyball game. Sarah Casey. Sarah currently serves as the Director of Faith-Based Engagement at Cornerstones in Reston, Virginia. Jared Christensen. Jared's area of focus was Buddhist studies. He now teaches history and world religion at the Polytechnic School in Pasadena, California. He is incredibly grateful for his studies at HDS. Adalis Garcia Gora. Oda Odalis just finished her first year as a PhD student in American Studies at UT Austin. She, she, she dedicates this degree to her family matriarchs whose sacrifice made it all possible. Yeah. 
Gray Turner Gilbert. Garrett Morgan Haddock. Garrett and his family, Andrea, Charlotte, and Asher, live in Indiana. Since 2020, he has been studying the Hebrew Bible as a PhD student in theology at Notre Dame. Asmira Adonai Anissa Hamori Davis. Asmira thanks God, her ancestors, friends, family, and village for the love and kindness to see her through her MTS. She continues her life's mission to break the boxes of limitation through community storytelling, <laughs> rhythm, and poetry at Harvard Radcliffe Institute. Elizabeth Ho. Elizabeth is deeply grateful to God, the staff and faculty at HDS, and her family and friends for their support throughout her graduate studies. James William Climus III. Yes, Joseph Latori. Joseph is extremely grateful for having had the chance to foster such deep connections with peers and faculty at HDS. He is currently completing his PhD in clinical psychology with a focus on psychedelic assisted psychotherapy at the University of Ottawa. <laughs> Queenie Loire. Casey McConnell. <laughs> Nicole Taylor Morris. Ni Nicole is grateful for the ecosystem of love from family and community that sustained her during her time at HDS and well beyond. She is a womanist bioethicist whose work is rooted in love and abolition. A a lens she shaped while learning with and from colleagues, professors, and community mentors. <laughs> Sydney Faye Moss. <laughs> Jessica Patey. Jessica is now a PhD student in religion and would not have made it this far without the continual support and love from her mother, sister, and husband. <laughs> Siona Pugliati. Siona is currently a curator at UCLA where she reaches, researches sensuous ephemera, material culture, and artistic traditions of South Asian diasporas. She dedicates this degree to her parents, brother, and the Palker and Weavers who have each contributed to her work and supported her journey through Harvard. <laughs> Yena Sharma Permisar. Yena dedicates the completion of her MTS degree to her mother, Mina, who is evidence of divine grace. Post-HDS, Yena works as a copy editor and has two books of poetry forthcoming this year. Alan Ruiz. Lindsay Grace Smith. Lindsay would like to thank her advisor, Catherine Breckis, her professors, and the school itself for, for, for providing her with her best friends some of the best conversations she's ever had in a really, really hard to explain degree. <laughs> you. 
Natalie Amador Solis. Natalie gives thanks to her mother, father, and community. She prays that we all find the divine within ourselves and each other. In the words of Sandra Cisneros, quote, blessed art thou, Guadalupe, and therefore blessed am I, end quote. Natalie is committed to the spiritual activism a la Gloria Anzaldúa. Sarah Storm. Manur Umer. Hope Alexis Williams. Hope would like to thank her family for always believing in her, her friends for their endless joy, and her partner John for always cheering her on. She loves you all. <laughs> Jessica Alice O'Neill Young. Jessica found her place at HDS amongst fellow seekers, heretics, the unorthodox, and those who do not fit in neat spiritual box. She is grateful for a community who accepts recall, Real Ku's invitation to, quote, love the questions themselves. Yeah, <laughs> Nadja Zigby Johnson. <laughs> Nadja is grateful for the Freedom School community, her advisors, Professor Todney Thomas and Kimberly Patton, and all those who poured into her while she was a student at HDS. Nadja is invigorated to continue with the Malcolm X and Dr. Betty Shabazz Center, where she's worked since 2020. And now we will recognize our Master of Divinity graduates for 2020. Mary Balkin. Mary offers love and blessings to all of the human and other than human beings who have accompanied and helped her on this journey. Many thanks. Jared Bachelor Hamilton. Jared is immensely grateful to his incredible professors, the staff that carried him through, and his family who prayed earnestly. Jared will be attending the University of Southern California this coming fall to pursue his PhD in religion. Alexandra Claire Boudreaux. Alexandra Boudreau would like to thank her parents, all of her family, friends, mentors, and community for all of their love and support. Ismail Abdul Hakim Buffins. Francesca Cipriani de Carrillo. Fran wishes to share with her loved ones supporting her today that you add so much beauty to her life and that she couldn't have done it without you. Tim DeLong Jr. Tim would like to thank his partner Heidi and his parents Tim and Sally for supporting him in this journey. Audra Jane Franley. Audra is now a candidate for ministry in the ELCA and an adjunct professor at Teal College. She is grateful for the affirming love of God and her companions along this journey. <laughs> Benjamin Freeman. 
Ben Freeman is a theater artist, musician, educator, and spiritual director. He is releasing an album of songs later this week called Quiet Fury, largely written while in Divinity School, and is associate clergy at Lab Shul, an artist-driven synagogue in New York City. Jason Holzel. Meredith Jeremiah. Meredith is now Reverend Meredith and serves as the minister at Horizon Unitarian Universalist Church in Dallas. Thanks to all who have made this happen. <laughs> Chulin K. Chulin is grateful for the opportunities to be changed. She's grateful for the love that's kept her herself. Grace Elizabeth Killian. Grace would like to thank her friends and family for all their support. <laughs> Leah Kimry Limbaugh. Leah would like to thank her family and her Sunday Donuts crew for their constant encouragement and professors Patton and Hallisey, whose wise words she has frequently revisited since her time at HDS. Ashley Y. Lipscomb. Ashley wants us all to create a world we have never seen, a world that loves so thoroughly that all of humanity can thrive. She believes we can make that world if we release our radical imagination and act on them. Yes. Linda Robinson McKenzie. Linda's cup is still running over with the Lord's goodness and mercy, which sustains her every day of her life. How wonderful it is that he knows her name. <laughs> Salvador Tabara Peña Andujar. Alexa Christina Rice. Alexa would like to thank her parents, Linda Johnson Rice and Andre Rice for their love and support. She would also like to thank her advisor, Andrew Cheater and Dudley Rose for making sure she actually graduated on time. <laughs> Emily Rogel. Emily is so grateful for the time she had at HDS to explore spiritual leadership in an interfaith context. She is currently pursuing rabbinic ordination at Hebrew College in Boston. Yeah. <laughs> Aliyah Truth Shinbro. Aliyah wants to thank everyone who has offered them love and courage to meet this moment. Special shout outs to Katie Caponera, the Sunday Donuts crew, and Hums for holding it together through hard times. Solidarity forever. Kamari Tejada. Kay Marie is a chaplain in the Air National Guard at Rhode Island and a PhD student at BU. Her philosophy is based on love, compassion, and kindness to every being. She hopes to serve as an inspiration to minorities to pursue higher education and is grateful for her time and support received at HDS. William Teresa. William would like to give special thanks to his mentors at HDS, Professor Kimberly Patton and Professor Michael Jackson, who continue to be so generous with their time and support.
Nora Christine Williams. Nora is grateful for her time at HDS. With the tools and skills learned here, she continues to study and practice in community alongside friends and partners and spiritual caregiving. We will now move to recognize our doctoral uh, graduates. We'll first recognize our 2020 A2020 2020 PhD graduate. Um, we'll have the advisors come to the stage for the hooding, I believe. So first, our 2020 PhD graduate, Anne-Marie Masikas bridges Anne-Marie is deeply grateful to Charlie Stang and Anne Monius for their mentorship. Next, we will have our Doctor of Theology graduates. First, Jason William Smith. Jason would like to thank Frank Clooney, Diana Eck, and Kimberly Patton for their mentorship, the many HDS faculty and staff who shaped his HDS experience, and his family and friends. He dedicates this moment to Ann Monius. This fall, he will begin, an assistant he will begin as assistant professor at Mercer University. Next, Peng Yin. I could have everyone from the class of 2020 please rise. Dean Hempton, members of the faculty, family and friends, I present to you the 2020 graduates of Harvard Divinity School. be seated. We will now recognize the class of 2021, again starting with our Master of Theological Studies graduates. 
First, Khadija Ali Amgayab. Khadija is grateful for her time at HDS and for the lessons of patience, determination, and resilience she learned while serving on the HDSSA. She cherishes the friends and mentors she found at HDS, but more importantly, her parents, siblings, and God for giving her everything she needed and more. Emily Naomi Bogan. Fong Bui. Fong would like to thank her family and friends for loving and supporting her unconditionally. <laughs> Melissa Cedillo. Melissa is grateful for all of the people in her life who supported her, loved her, and made her feel loved. Kyle Edward Dillon. Kyle is currently pursuing another master's degree at the University of Notre Dame. Kyle is delighted to be back with all the amazing people here at HDS to celebrate our accomplishments. Taylor Donaldson. Taylor would like to thank her parents, Kent and Brenda, grandma, late grandpa, and fiance for their love and encouragement throughout her HDS degree and beyond. Lissady Gravelin. Lissady would not be here without Mark, Haley, Toomey, and Herluca. She wants to thank them for protecting her flame and spirit so fiercely. Their love fuels her abundantly and infinitely. Yes. <laughs> William Grogan. Margaret Jean Ham. Mar yeah! Margaret would like to thank Kate, Mary, and Julia for being the best support system, for watching every TikTok she sends them, and, mm -hmm. and for always being willing to eat ice cream in the middle of the day. <laughs> Catherine Beulah Harwell. Kate Hoding. Kate is grateful for all of the mentors, pals, and co-conspirators who equipped her to tell the world that abortion is health care. Sarah Beth Kissel. Sarah is graduating today because of her family, Richard and Ethel, Rick and Anne, and Lynn and Bob. Their love, wisdom, and healthy sense of humor make everything possible. Thanks also to Mary M. Kaba and to HDS for urging Harvard to divest from prisons. No one is free until everyone is free. Vivian Christine Costin. Ebony Rain Nash. Ebony would like to thank her mother, Teresa Witte, sister, Stormy Nash, grandmother, Dolores Nash, godmother, Tracy McCormick, and the rest of her family for their continued support and motivation. May this moment serve as a personal promise. The future is bright and the cycle is broken. We made it. Naman Pratish Patel. Naman has cherished the rare and special privilege it is to exchange ideas and share time with the brilliant people that make up the school. He thanks God, his mom and dad, and gives a big shout out to his nephew, Yuvon. Kaylee Danielle Paul. 
Kaylee would like to thank everyone who has supported and believed in her throughout her educational journey and beyond. Congratulations to the classes of 2020, 2021, and 2022. C.L. Chi. Zara Rizzuli. <laughs> Bethany Rose Sky Rosario. Sky would like to thank her family and Dr. Sonson for their unconditional support in her pursuits. She intends to focus on her creative writing in order to, as Cl poet Clement Wood says, quote, speak the word waiting in the hearts of others for utterance. Daniel Sanders. Daniel is grateful for the opportunity to work towards a more religiously literate and pluralistic world through cultivating an active appreciation of multiple diverse traditions. Salam Sabini. Salam wants to thank her husband Ferris for his unwavering support throughout her educational journey. Reem Shake. Reem would like to thank all her professors, classmates, and friends who made her time at HDS memorable. She hopes these friendships and connections last for years to come. Reem will be starting her PhD this fall at the University of Texas in Austin. Jason Adam Sheets. Jason Adam Sheets is a poet and educator with two books scheduled for release this year. He's learned that the only stories worth telling are the ones charged with courage and truth. Manur Umer. Manur would like to thank everyone, especially her mom, who has watched her journey unfold and stood by her. This degree is as much yours as it is hers. Caitlin Wheeler. Caitlin wants to thank her dad for helping her realize the impossible is possible, and she wants to thank her mom for being her emotional support system when stress levels ran high. And now the Master of Divinity graduates of 2021. Emma Grace Brewer Wallen. Jasmine Bloomer Buchanan. Jazz Buchanan would like to thank her wife, Jackie, her mom and sister, her cat, Mr. Bumble, and all of her friends, family, and mentors for their love and support. Emmanuel Cosue Correa Vasquez. Emmanuel would like to thank his family back home in Puerto Rico and all those who have accompanied him for their love and support in this journey of vocation. Emmanuel is on the path towards ordained ministry and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Ana Catherine Del Castillo. Anna thanks her beloved community for getting her here, especially the students and professors who have changed her life. She dedicates this degree to her mother, Sally, who taught her to fiercely love God and build the better world that is possible. She wraps each of you in light and gratitude. Stephen Salito Fisher. Stephen would like to thank his mentors for their wisdom and compassion, his patrons for becoming his teachers in healing, friends for illuminating the past years with laughter, and family for a lifelong foundation in faith and love.
Amy Christina Grulich. Amy revels in the love and care of courageous and gentle beings accompaniment of peers, professors, pets, parents, and plants. Their devoted practices to embody a more beautiful, kind, and just world. Thank you all. Sally Hamill. Sally would like to thank her family and friends who supported her in this dream of a lifetime to go back to school at 60 after a corporate career in advertising. Sally is using her pastoral care skills honed at HDS and Memorial Church as a hospice chaplain in Hudson Valley, New York. Thank you, HDS. Eleanor Dickinson Hartley. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> J.Y. Lee. J.Y. thanks family, friends, professors, pastors, saints, angels, and Jesus. After wilderness wandering, J.Y. abides with his tribe of presbys at Princeton Seminary and eagerly awaits your visit. Robert McGinn. <laughs> Venerable Tian Nguyen. Venerable Tian Nguyen is grateful and appreciates all those who support him on his journey. Studying at HDS has been a life-changing opportunity for him. He will continue to take what he has learned to contribute to cultivate a better future and for the good of many. Thank you so much. Tony Sacco. Tony would like to thank her friends and family for their love and support. Kayla Jacquez Smith. In celebration of Jalen Bernard Watkins. Yeah. Joe Sorensen. Yeah. Rowan Alexandra Van Ness. Venerable Sean Fong. Charlotte Catherine Zelli. Charlotte would like to thank her family, friends, professors, and mentors for their support. This strong community helped her to grow personally and professionally and ultimately earn her MDiv degree. Let Charlotte join you. Can I have everyone from the class of 2021 please rise? Dean Hempton, members of the faculty, family and friends, I present to you the 2021 graduates of Harvard Divinity School. be seated. Dean Hempton, we return it to you. Thanks, Tim, Steph, Annie, all the members of the Office of Student Services and Development, External Relations, for making this day happen. We're really, really grateful. Um, I'd also like to thank um, all our facilities team and staff who have worked <laughs> So 
So I hope to meet and see many of you at our luncheon under the tent on the Francis Avenue side of Swartz Hall. So, um, and right now I just want to add more congratulations to the two graduating classes, uh, 20 and 21. So, well done. <laughs> So I do ask that our guests remain seated until all graduates have processed out of the tent and the platform party and faculty will now lead the graduates out of the tent. Thanks so much everyone for coming.